Welcome to the FNBO Fridays in the Field, brought to you by FNBO, the great big small bank. I'm Susan Littlefield. It is hard to believe it is the last time this growing season that we are going to be on the east coast of Nebraska, as we've been calling it this whole time. This growing season has gone fast, but as we all know, it has thrown some many, many frustrations at our producers, including Quentin Keneally, who we are back at his operation today. A breezy day going on, but now it is starting to feel a little bit like fall. That's right, yeah. That's a, you guys usually bring in the rain, but this time you brought the wind. I brought wind this time. So uh, look at it, kind of revamp what we saw this growing season, because Mother Nature definitely has given you some opportunities, but unfortunately a lot less opportunities for a decent growing season. That's what, yeah, it feels like almost like a blur already, but uh, I know planting went smooth since you were here, and then after that it was pretty much just uh, fertilizer and then keeping weeds, the war on weeds, and then irrigation ran most of it, and then now we're uh, finished up hauling old crop and just getting all the harvest stuff ready. So just a whirlwind and survived some windstorms along the way and missed all the hail, frozen stuff so far. So cross your fingers, we're uh, looking like all the corn's still standing for what we went through. Which is good and I know it's been, you have both combination of dry land and irrigated. Let's look at that dry land. How has that gone this season with really a lot of lack of moisture? That's what the last two weeks, everything's really been turning colors here. So. Irrigation looks pretty good, but the dry land, you can definitely see it on the corners, on the edge of the fields, it's starting to brown up and work towards the center. So I think it uh, feels like fall every day now. You did have the, uh, the airborne sprayers out there working for you. Did that help with any sort of issues that you had with fungicide and insects? Yeah, so far it looked like it did really good on the insects. They kind of moved back in here in spotty, but uh, we got those taken care of. And so far everything's standing, so I think our fungicide and stock strength looks good for what we went through in a couple 75 mile an hour windstorms. So we're looking pretty good. Uh, it's always nice to get that combine through standing corn if we can hold it. Well, you talk about the, the windstorms that came through and I think that just shows that the technology and the, and the change in genetics has been so strong to be able to have a good seed to grow like it did in the conditions it had this year. Right, yeah, it's been a process. I mean, we kind of weed out the seeds, uh, plants that don't withstand the wind. So we get rid of some of them and we're finally getting a good hold on our numbers. and finding hybrids that stand out here on the east side of Nebraska. You do have a great uh, seed plot that you have been working with a couple different seed companies with. How is that plot looking? It's looking pretty good. My uh, Helena guy was out there a couple days ago, sent me some all the numbers looking ears, but there's so much variance out there. And that's what I've been hearing about guys in the field that uh, just going through the field, there's so much variant in plants and numbers and hybrids and everything. So and what got water and what got the fertilizer, you can really see a lot of vulnerability out there. What is your optimism for harvest this year? Um, I don't know, irrigation, we're going to hold our numbers up there and look optimistic there, but dry land, I mean, we're going to have to get ready for some lows because we're below, we're 10 to 11 inches below rainfill, 10 year average rainfall here. So That is crazy, but I think, you know, what is always so unique is if anybody is optimis optimistic in this world of agriculture, it's the farmer. Yeah, that's what you got to be to get out here every day and keep doing it because no matter what the weather blows at you or sends at you, we got to get back up there. So, so we try. Been, what's been your highlight of this growing season? Highlight, I guess all the pivots are still standing and I'm still standing. That's that uh, it's been a it's been a heck of a ride. I was like, I say it's going to be me, my gator, one of the pivots break first and all the pivots already broke. So they're good. Got them going. The gator went and it's got to going now. So uh, and I'm still standing. So we'll call that a success, I guess. And you know what I absolutely love it is you've got some great management and he is really doing great when it comes to, to getting your irrigation going. Yeah, yeah, he's a little. Uh, ball of fire and keeps the energy there and then uh, helps me close gates and then he's around and he'll be wrapped off school tomorrow. He's already in second grade, so he's got that. And then Willa, she's a, she's a little all-star. She likes to check pivots now, so she's always down for a pivot ride at the end of the day. So I wanted to talk about that. How important is it to bring your kids into the daily part of running a farming operation? I think it's good to bring them in slowly and show them it's dangerous, but you still got to show them the fun parts. So they kind of at least show some interest to it and we don't push them on them too much and they can come help when they want and it's not like they're born into it but they kind of are so right and for them it's it's a chance to spend more time with dad yeah freedom of choice and yeah sometimes they want to be with me and sometimes they don't so just depends on the weather get ready to wrap up 22 what are your outlooks for 23 knowing the adverses that you've had going into this harvest and and obviously getting ready to start thinking about next year's planting season so yeah, I've been a lot of chatter. Everything is so vulnerable right now. Fertilizer, fuel prices, grain prices, um, basis at different elevators. We're just having to watch full spectrum and make sure we get everything locked in for next year and get some good prices locked in so we can afford it. And I don't know, it's an everyday battle. So I'm still learning. So I can't say, I, that's kind of my plan, but can't say I have a real well-defined 
management on that one yet. And you still have the older generations to kind of lean on to get their thoughts because they've been through a variety of different droughts uh, like we've been seeing this year. Yep, yep. So my dad and uncle still farm with me, so they got a lot of insight for the years. And then our retailers are pretty good to us and the guys we work with. So we kind of learn from them and go back and forth. And we try to, as long as everybody's making money, I think we'll be happy. So I think that what you're trying to tell me is it's important to rely on a variety of different folks when you're growing the crop. One farmer can't do it all anymore. That's right. Yeah, it takes a pretty good team with uh, employees to elders watching over you, retailers, co-ops, anything. I mean, get them on your side and elevator. You never know if they're on your side or not, but we, we still love them. So what, what's the best piece of advice, Quentin, you've gotten from somebody this growing season, knowing it's not the normal? Mm -hmm. I don't know, just be ready for the curveballs and, I don't know, make money when you can, I guess, because you just never know when everything's going to fall out. And we've been through it once, and I've only been farming about 10 years now, and I've seen it once, and just trying to be careful this time around and make sure we're not too unreasonable and uh, irresponsible, I guess. But excitement's coming around the corner when that combine pulls into the yard and, and you're ready to harvest this crop. So yeah, we're in our last grain bin, shipping the last year's crop out. So a little late, but we didn't think it'd get this dry this fast. So pretty soon, we'll uh, next week, we'll have the combine and walker wagons or grain carts, as people call them, out. And we'll, uh, it'll really feel, feel like fall next week, I think. Oh, very much so. So having said that, when, when you're getting underway, when is the latest you're going to be shutting these pivots off? Uh, I'm hoping this week, if we can do our rain dances and get some for uh, the Husker game this weekend. I'm supposed to get some rain this weekend, and I think that would finish off a lot of this. Corn's right on the edge. Some of it's done, and we've shut them off. But uh, beans, it'd be nice to get a good soaker on them and finish them out good. What advice would you give to somebody who's looking at saying, hey, I kind of want to do what Quentin's doing and be able to, to farm again? What would you tell them? Mm, be open to learning, network a lot, know a lot of people, and get a lot of people on your side to help you through it because uh, you, you can't do it out here alone. That's for sure. Well, one final question for you, social media, how have you utilized that to educated them about this whole drought situation? Oh, it's been kind of a process. I think a lot of people are intrigued by the pivots and our, our uh, quality of water around here that we can get into water and all, irrigate all these thousands of acres of crops. So kind of tiptoeing on that and showing them all the good stuff we can do out here because uh, the news kind of portrays a lot of bad stuff. So we can, we can use our word and everybody has a story. So you might as well be the one to tell it. There we go. Well, I appreciate you taking time to come out and and join us as my farmer for, for Fridays in the Field. Yeah, it's been fun. I can't believe it's the last one. I know. You have to sneak back out for the combine. I think I will. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we'll work on that. Right. Well, that has been another edition for me of the FNBO Fridays in the Field. We wish everybody, including Quinton and his family, a very safe harvest, and you as well, a safe harvest as you get ready for 2023. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. Mm -hmm.